This video is going to kind of be different. And it's going to be talking about the art of the creepypasta. Now, for those of you that don't know what a creepypasta is, I'm looking at you, Grandma, because I just found out you watch my channel. A creepypasta is a short, is a short, basic, mo mostly short, internet horror story written written and can easily be copied and pasted to somewhere else right and and most creepy pastas that they're at least passable with that thing and it started with a famous internet horror story called jeff the killer and it's surprising how something so damn bad could spawn such a, a loving and wonderful thing um so I think I'm going to start a new series on this channel called Creepy Pasta Reviews, where I review some of my favorite and not so, and not favorite creepy pastas. Uh, well, let's start off with I think the greatest creepy pasta I've ever read, and it's called Baraska. And I do not want to spoil a single thing about this story. It is without a doubt the best creepypasta that ever has existed that has ever existed but that's just me anyways i told you literally anything about those stories and it might spoil it this was about an hour and 30 minutes long no like two hours and 30 minutes long but it is damn worth the read, or listening, if you're listening to it through YouTube. And, um, the person who wrote that, I think it was C.K. Wa Walker, they did an amazing job of turning, like, a small little, little thing, which was most, which are mostly made for jokes, and they made something truly amazing. And so I have to give him props for that. The story, the story isn't dependent on monsters or shock value because it doesn't need to. And when it does shock you, it shocks you in an organic way that weaves perfectly and seamlessly into the plot as our main character grows uh, more and more suspicious of a certain other character and and one of his friend and when one of his friends go missing, the plot really kicks off. And its slow start doesn't even doesn't even bother me because it sets up the story so well. So I'm gonna have to rate Baraska a ten point one out of ten. Truly an amazing story with no flaws in sight unless you unless you look down deep down into some of the logic. Which I can all, which I can mostly still see. So a very impressive story by C.K. Walker. Now let's look at a not so impressive story by someone who shall remain nameless. And it is the writer of Jeff the Killer. Now I don't understand why in the name of the Lord anybody would think that this story is passable enough to spawn something like this. <sighs> and believe me, Jeff the Killer would spawn many stories basically exactly like it with the same plot beats, similar names in the title, sequels to the original, unofficial sequels to the original. So, you know, they're pretty damn bad. Jeff the Killer follows the story of our main character, Jeff. Not a great way to set up the fact that he's gonna kill everyone, but okay. He's recently moved into a new town, which is almost exactly how Baraska starts. Except Baraska did it way better with the nice setup. Meets his, na meets his neighbors, gets beat up by bullies, has his brother save him, his brother takes the blame for it and goes to jail. Goes to, um... Goes to a birthday party, and who's there but the bullies who have recovered from their broken bones and injuries only f after only five days. Then they beat then they beat Jeff up, 
he, Jeff, Jeff spills vodka all over himself, apparently, at a child's per party. And the next day, and then he, and then he gets set alight, and he's on fire, and he skin melt, as well as a very unnecessary picture of Jeff. Basically, it looks like he accidentally turned on Flash on his phone, and he was wearing lipstick. That's what he looks like. So yeah, that story. That was terrible. Three out of ten. I can almost see why some people like it. It was also memed to death. There are so many jokes about this story among the creepypasta community that... Yeah, everybody knows it's bad, but they're kind of glad that they spawned this. We're gonna look at one more creepypasta today, and that is the Russian sleep experiment. I don't need to tell you. This story is short and sweet. It is not perfect, as no story really ever is, except maybe Baroska. And it delivers on every level imaginable. It poses a philosophical question. And after, okay, so basically here's the story. A gas has been discovered that eliminates the need for sleep in humans. And in the Soviet Union, three enemies of the state are tested with this gas. After, after a couple days, things start to get bad. They're smearing feces over the walls, barely eating, whispering, trying to be, get let out. Until after one day, some of them start to die as they fall asleep into the, in the gas. Now, the only way to kill the monsters that arose from this would be to have them put to sleep. So they were. The last one was, was shot at, at Point Blank Grange. And it delivered a very creepy message, detailing exactly what the gas did to them. And I won't spoil it here, because... The story is really damn good, and you should read it, too. Existential crises and all that. Uh, and I'll overall give the story a 7.8 out of 10. It's not perfect. No story ever really is. So, yeah. I'm glad that I read that story. And, you know, I'm glad I read Jeff the Killer, too. Because, you know... At least I know where the where the criticism from it's coming from, and it is garbage. Uh, maybe next tom tomorrow, maybe later for the next edition of the series, I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to the famous story Ben Drowned, which I've heard is really good, and I'm also gonna read up on a little bit of my Slenderman lore. But yeah, that's and that's a new series. Let me let let me know if you guys want more of it. Keep your posture if he is.